Historic night in Albany. Governor Andrew Cuomo will leave the mansion that he has had access to for more than two decades of his adult life. And in will walk Buffalo born Kathy Hochul to take over. Lieutenant Governor becoming the first woman to lead the state of New York after Cuomo resigned over allegations of sexual harassment. And joining us now to talk about the significance of this change is Jim Lemoyne. He's the faculty director of UB Center for Leadership and Organizational Effectiveness. And Jim, this is such a big moment for Kathy Hochul. It's a big moment for New York, a big moment for women in New York with so much work to do wrapped up in so much history in a place that is no stranger to controversy and that's putting it politely. When you look at this from an academic perspective, what sort of challenges lie ahead for the new governor? Oh my goodness, we don't have time to get into a full description of all of those challenges. Um, I'll give you two that jump to mind really quick though. Uh, first, Governor Cuomo uh, is famous uh, for having a very centralized power structure. He loves to make the decisions himself at, at all different levels. Uh, some leaders do very well in situations like that. Most don't. Most leaders tend to do better when more decisions are delegated, when more experts have a chance to, uh, to pull those levers. Uh, the risk for uh, Governor Hochul is that the state government may not be set up for a more delegated system as of now. She could find herself making high stakes decisions as well as ones that are really minutia that she doesn't need to concern herself with, not the best use for time. So she's gonna have to delegate and she's gonna have to delegate very quickly. Another one I was thinking about, and it's, it's a challenge that's especially prevalent for women moving into new leadership roles, is kind of the catch-22. Research shows that our expectations of a leader drive what we expect the next leader to be. So if we look at New York, well, she's what does she do? If she tries to be a little bit more like Governor Cuomo, a little more aggressive, a little more combative, people are going to say, well, you're not changing things. You're not doing what we, we hoped you would do. But if she changes things too much, then people in state government, especially high ranking state officials, are going to look at her. And at least subconsciously, they're going to think she's not acting like a governor. This isn't what I'm used to. And they might resist her a little bit more. And again, unfortunately, that's a problem that's a lot more prevalent for women uh, just because they have trouble breaking through stereotypes of leadership. Yeah, and Kathy Hochul, one thing she is promising to change is the culture in Albany that allowed the kind of behavior that brought down Governor Cuomo. So she started by appointing two women to the top positions in her administration. And some look at that and say she's setting a tone and others may say it's about time. What do you think her choices say about what kind of administration she hopes to have? Well, I think it's too early to say with that. If you look at uh, Governor Cuomo's executive chamber, there were many women on there. If you look at Governor Spitzer's cabinet, there were many women represented on there. So obviously just having women on the cabinet, while a good thing, it's not necessarily enough to solve the problem. Look, it's a culture that needs to be changed, right? And cultures, the research says there's so much evidence. They're tremendously sticky. They're hard to change. Um, and this, we're talking about a culture that's been ingrained in, in New York state government for at least 10 years now, probably a lot more. Um, and her challenge is going to be that every time one of the old guard does something or says something that reinforces that old culture, it makes it that much harder for her to change the new one. I know she's moving to install new people in a lot of top positions, but that's not going to happen overnight. I know she gave herself a deadline of 45 days, so there's still going to be a lot of people from the old guard. She's going to need to be explicit. She's going to need to be willful and she's going to need to be purposeful to say, hey, this is who we are. This is what we stand for. This may not be the way it's been in the past, but this is how we treat people. This is how we think of each other. This is how we use our power. And she's going to have to come down hard pretty quickly on people who don't toe the line on that culture. or It'll just be more of, this, more of the same and her effectiveness will be really limited. Yeah, and under a minute now, Jim, um, she's not just the governor for the next year. She's also indicated that she will be a candidate in the next election. So what challenges is being the first woman in that position going to present her? Women have a harder time seeking elected office. There's a lot of research on this, uh, especially in New York. I think she's going to have a challenge. And what are we used to in our governors? What do we expect? Well, we're used to aggressive to the point of combative, confident to the point of overconfidence, uh, the tough guy image, right? Can a woman live up to that image or even should she have to? Um, will she be able to make a new case that uh, the governor of New York doesn't necessarily have to be this old school, rough and tumble tough guy? Maybe it could be something different, uh, something better. Uh, but that's going to be a case that she's going to need to make to the voters, that the stereotypes of men as the best leaders because they're supposed to be more independent and assertive. Well, the research shows they just aren't true. And our consciously we know that, but our subconscious, sometimes it's hard to explain that to. Jim Lemoyne is the faculty director of UB Center for Leadership and Organizational Effectiveness. Thank you so much, Jim, for your perspective. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And thanks for joining us on the town hall tonight. We hope that you'll text us a question or a comment, 716-849-2220.